All right, time for the thrilling conclusion, I assume, of even the ocean. Sunspire, or whatever. Oh. It's just a big ol' off switch up here. This time I need to direct the lasers different than I'm used to. Dark energy goes to White Forge and light to the plants. Oh, I didn't even notice that that was Light Forge. Okay, so Dark Energy goes to Light Forge. And Energy goes to the plants. It's it's done. I reversed the Energy Flow. At least, that should have reversed it. There's no way to tell right away. At least there's a chance now. I should get to the base of the tower for now. Hopefully this won't, like, drain it too far the other way, and then we all die again. And the Apex District started to return to the ground. Hopefully gradually, not like... Oh! Eh, it's fine! Good enough for government work. I'm sure only a few thousand people died. Straight back to the Murex Park to meet back with Yara. Aleph, what happened? Did you do it? The rain eased up. Yara, I did it. I reversed the energy. Oh my god, good. That's great, Aleph. So now we wait? Yeah. Now we wait. We wait to not die? The most anticlimactic thing. Uh, what's this? Uh oh. Are we still dead? The waterfall is like gonna kill our family. Uh oh. Look, I reversed the switch, okay? You can't kill me. That's how this goes. Uh oh. Yeah, we're toast. Ripperoni in pepperoni. Yep, there's like two villages already dead, and we're dead. Oh no, not you. The flood, it's beginning to swell up the horizon. We don't have long now. We should have seen it coming. I should have seen it coming. White Forge, the light energy, our balance, the imbalance, our civilization was corrupted by power. Is that it, Thomas? It became greedy and exploitative in this. This is our punishment. Perhaps to some degree, but in many cases, power does not change people as much as it redefines the effects of their instincts. What do you mean? Let me put it this way. When a plant or animal is transferred to an environment where it has an abundance of resources, physical advantages, and or lack of prejudice, that species enters a position of relative power. It will garner an ever larger share of the environment's resources to the detriment of that environment's other inhabitants. Some in humans call this invasive species. Okay. I think I get what... Hamas is saying, maybe the problem isn't the powerful people are transformed by their power. Maybe the problem is that they aren't transformed. Exactly. Humans like any other creature. We do what we need to survive. But in our society, with our technology, some people in space exist in a space where immediate physical concerns, things like food and shelter, vanish completely. You have to keep on exerting power and exerting power. They build giant floating towers like it's the only thing keeping them alive, even though it continues to be further and further from the truth. That unnecessary exertion of power is destructive. Individual acts of violence are a necessary part of the struggle for survival and growth in any ecosystem. But as systems' power become more and more imbalanced, the violence of powerful becomes less justifiable. So it's all just inevitable, then? No matter how many cycles of civilization passed? Will people just always end up with destructive power structures like an invasive species? The way Hamas sounds, describes it, sounds just like clockwork. Like we never had a chance. Like nothing matters. Like nobody's really right or wrong. I do experience the universe, primarily as interlocking system, playing out. But remember this, Aleph. I do have a limited perspective in the face of the sheer complexity of existence. I don't think we can really know what we have true control over, what humans are capable of a whole, and if we don't know, well, then there's some worth fighting for things, even if they seem impossible. We're trying to think of different paths in the face of what feels inevitable. But now, it's too late, right? It's also hopeless. Not just us, not just our lives, but White Forge, everything. I mean, maybe if we could write it all down for the next cycle of the world, but how? And what? There's not enough time. I've been spun around too many times. Over the last few weeks, everything's a blur. I don't know what's important anymore. What feelings to trust? I know, Aleph. But 
This is all too much to take in. But I have one idea. Hummus. Yes? I have this feeling you aren't as bound to this time and place as us. That you can survive the flood or travel to places we can never reach. Is that true? That's correct. Well, would you please... Would you be interested in telling the story to other people? Other humans? Or anyone else that could understand it? The story of Whiteforge, I mean. The story of Aleph and Cassidy and Major Biggs and all of us. Aw, oh, Hummus made the game! What if I told... What if you told it to other people? People who had more time. They can make something... Like more of this than we all could. Maybe everything went through could all be more worthwhile somehow. I know you don't really care about the plans or fates of humans. But maybe it could at least be an interesting experience for you? Well, yes, I think that could be arranged. Really? Do you promise? Promise? <laughs> okay, I promise. Okay, thank you, Hummus. Maybe we should have killed Hummus after all. But whatever. He's not a very helpful guy. I don't think that you really mattered as much as you did. The flood was coming. Maybe you shifted the timing a little bit on a large scale. We just don't get it. With or without you, we are headed to the flood. You shouldn't be comforting me. It's not right. I know when you do something wrong, sometimes it feels like you have to pay by feeling bad enough somehow. Like that's justice, but it's just not. I don't really agree. I think it's kind of essential that when you do bad things, you feel bad. Like, I don't think a lot of people understand that. Like, people show this behavior where, like, they do something really bad, and then a bad thing happens to them for the first time in their life. And, like... Like, this happens with online harassment stuff a lot. Like, somebody is, like, a complete fucking asshole to everyone around him, and then they get banned. And they're like, oh, how could I get banned? How could this possibly happen to me? How could how could somebody have done something like this to me? And it's like, they don't understand. They've been being an asshole and, like, harming other people the whole time. And, you know, they you need to feel bad when you do bad things. Uh, that's That's life. That's empathy. That's humans. That's... That's everything. If you don't want to feel bad, stop doing bad things. Like, that shouldn't be controversial. Anyway, at this point, what else do we have besides comforting each other? You've been a friend to me, Aleph. You've made the last few weeks of my life better. And now, I want you here, present with me, because I'm afraid. Thank you, Yara. You've been a better friend to me than I could ever ask for. And thank you, Hummus, for telling our story. Guess this is it. The end. Can we maybe sing even the ocean together? Yes. Yes, please. Hush now, little babe. I will hold you in my arms. Sleep now, little babe. I will keep you from all harm. <laughs> Except for the flood. For you. I know. That even the mountains, even the ocean, none will sunder you from the love we set in motion. Yep, and that's the whole drought and flood thing. Love will be your blanket, love will be your pillow. Hold it in your heart. As you sleep beneath the willow. Six feet under the willow, because we're all going to frickin' die. Hush now, little babe. You may rest your drooping eyes. Sleep now, little babe. Now that you are mine. Forever. You are mine. You are a pirate. <laughs> then water comes in and kills everyone. Hooray. Yep. There's the ocean. She's a part of us, too. She lives on the ways she affected us and the ways she we go on to affect others in an ever-expanding ripple across time even after her consciousness her conscious memory has faded from the earth Aww, that's about cassidy and that is the story called even the ocean i've told it to you now you're hummus aren't you 
Just as I promised Yar and Aleph would. Yes, it's me. Hummus! <laughs> Yar was right. This is sort of interesting. Maybe I'm getting a stranger in my old age. I hope it was pleasant or interesting or worthwhile in some way. I really do. But please don't let me keep you any longer. I'm off to tell the story again. In another time, in another place, in another world. To another person just like you. To another person completely different. Goodbye. Bye bye, Hummus. Well, that was even the ocean. I wasn't expecting the meta twist. I was I wasn't expecting the downer ending either. But yeah, that was really interesting. Oh, some GDC picks. I really hope to be able to go to GDC and stuff like that sometime, but I don't really have the budget or the time at present to do that. Well, guess I'll just let the credits roll. Hopefully I don't get flooded with ice tomorrow. Or tonight, rather. <laughs> the uh, photos have the same pixel like... Well, I guess they got low res to uh, fit with the games. Look. Sketch of trees for each area. I love when games include their concept art and stuff. Because a lot of stuff you don't really see. Mm. Oh, hey, Chris Stryer. Yeah, I guess he did do the, uh, the uh, release marketing stuff. One of the earliest level design plans. Now that is how you design a video game, my friends. Oh man, I wish I had it, but um, hey, they use GIMP. Um, it's probably long since decomposed by now, but I had a uh, a little binder where I was I was making Yoshi's Island 2. I was totally gonna pitch it to Nintendo, and we were gonna make a, mi a billion dollars, not just a million. And oh, I made levels and everything. They weren't very big. Because, like, they had to fit on a sheet of paper. But it was still really cool. An early rescue beach plant. Oh, that is way different. Wow. It's interesting to see how things change. Aw. Rip, Grandpa. <laughs> Marine Transnet. What is Marine Transcendent? Oh, hey, Orahak! An early Fey Rouge. Ooh! I like that moment where, like, you know, it's not final, but they're kind of getting the graphics down, like, you know, sell the point of it, but it's not just, you know, I guess it's, it's like a step up from the programmer art phase of things. Thank you for playing and thank you for the support. If you enjoyed Even the Ocean, tell a friend. That's what I'm doing! For dev commentary and more, continue the game after the credits. Oh hey, Even the Ocean, the second game by Sean and Johnny. We did it! Capirate Analgesic Production LLC. Oh, I want to see some... And Oh, and one more thing. This is after the story ride. Now, it is mostly out of my hands. But maybe I can show you something that isn't. How can I put this cannon? Anyways, if you want, I'll send you back to the city entrance, but I will be able to leave the city. And go anywhere. What do you say? I'll even throw in a gift, too. <laughs> of course and sure. Okay, great. Have this. Not like you have a choice, huh? Did you see that? I only let you answer of course and sure. I think that's what you call a joke, right? Haha. <laughs> anyway, this device. This gift is some kind of communication device. Maybe you'll find some meshes for something. Who knows? Yours now. Well, Alice. She'll have it when you return to the story. And for fun, I've had an option to make... Alice's movement's more extreme. You'll see. Oh heck yes! As I was saying, thank you for listening to Aleph and Yara's story. I'll be sending you back to the entrance of Whiteford, so please make sure you save your game. Don't forget to check out that communication device. If you bring it to some statue in the northern outer continent, you might find something very interesting. But for now, take care. Dev commentary, I guess. Hey there, it's me. Not Thomas, it's Sean. I'm in Kyoto right now, just typing this. Got money for the 7-Eleven? My girlfriend's working on some classical Japanese in front of me. 
Sure, this, I guess we finished the game, huh? That's really great. Boy, I was kind of scared all the years, but somehow Johnny and I, we did it. Anyways, I hope you liked it. There's still more I want to show you. Why don't you come all the way to the North Outer Continent? Oh, yes, that's what that creepy statue was. All right. Let's try this extreme movement thing we got going on. Uh, triple speed! Hell yes! Gotta go fast! Yeah! Oh, I love when games do stuff like that. Uh, that's one of the favorite, my favorite New Game Plus features from, um, um... Who are you? Excuse you. Oh, I'll have difficult times for head. Listen to the ones you trust the most. And try your heart, uh, see your own heart with clarity. Goodbye, Aleph. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I guess this, they didn't, you know, program a return trip. So it's just the same thing over. I guess, did I save? I'll... I'll save once I'm over here. But yeah, Megan mentioned Neptunia V2 had uh, a thing that speds you up after uh, you get a new game plus. You know, and, um, it's an option you can toggle. It's really great. I, I wish more things had like, you know, you, you played the game normally. Let's just let you have a bit more fun, huh? That's what a new game plus should be to me. You know, let me move faster. Let me do, you know. Be a little bit unbalanced. Let me do some crazy stuff I couldn't do before. That's what a new game plus is to me. And, um... Yeah. Well, let's see what the statue's all about. Something about the statue. It's burning! Some kind of strange force is pulling me in! From here on, some secret content. Make sure you... Make sure to use the post-ending warp function from the menu if you ever get stuck. What? What is this? This is an example of Joni message. Whoa, whoa, two big things. One, there's a new triple speed and mini maps. Gameplay option to try out too. Don't forget to talk to all of Joni's messages too, like the one to the right of me. Oh, it's like prototype, whoa. What are you? I'm Olive the Rabbit. I ate too much cereal and now I can't stop spinning. What to do? I ate so much cereal back in that field world that I ended up here somehow. What to do? This is truly a disturbing universe. All right, what do you have to say? Ahead, I used to hide items, but I think it'll be more enjoyable if I just remove items. So I did. What is ahead? Well, if you just played, you can call this the old ocean a long time ago. So, okay, so it's prototypes. Adventure, adventure is just going to be called the ocean. The plot would roughly follow what even the ocean is. Adventure, you're going to go to Sick Planet. 3K Breeze, I hope you enjoy finding the old ocean. Feel free to ask me outside of this game. Okay. Wee rocket ship! I don't know what that's supposed to... I guess there's some, like, prototype levels they have going on. We No. I said we. Ah, whatever. I don't think you're supposed to go up there. Let's take a quick peek. I think that we're... Wait, what? Ocean Repository Ring 2? Whoa. What? Oh, tower floor, what? Huh. Some very in-progress stuff, I guess. I'm just kind of... putting crap together. Prototype stuff. Alright. That's, huh? Weird. But yeah, that was even the ocean, and that was real fun. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and uh, if you did, tell a friend, I guess. That's what I did. In, in, a, in a sense, I guess. Uh, they had a thing where if you bought the game... Oh, hey. Overgrown Woods. What do you got to say? So ahead, well, I suppose that's where I'll part. Ahead, I used to hide items, but I think it'll be more enjoyable if I just remove the items. Oh, maybe that's why I thought it was a Metroidvania. Maybe it was planned to be a Metroidvania, and they just made it more of a, you know, a narrative platformer. Yeah, we read that before. That was weird. Wee. 
Okay, so there's some actual game design in this area, not just random crap. What is this? Just grasses, I guess. Water. And I think they said on the... <gasps> oh! Information kiosk! What do the numbers mean? What do the numbers mean? Enter to Old Ocean, Act 1, entrance to a forest, more power plants. Explore the golems, visit the ends of the earth, return home. Aw, oh, dang, it's like the whole freaking old game, but you know, they didn't have like the full thing, but... Oh, but I can't like... get the frick out of here, though. Huh. That is really interesting. I've never really seen something like where they like... put the whole unfinished game in there for you to poke around with if you want. That's... That's really interesting. But yeah, this has been Even the Ocean. Oh yeah, what, what I was saying is, if you bought the game on Itch.io, um, they did this thing where like you could do an, a book essay and like share it with your friends, I guess, and then you would get a copy. Uh, you send it to them, like a book report sort of thing. And then you would get a key that you could give to a friend. So that's pretty cool. I don't know if they're still doing that, but um, that, that, that's a really neat idea. I don't think, I don't know what's up with this place. But yeah, I, as cool as this stuff is, I, I'm not sure I really want to dig too far. I, you know, I played a lot of this game already today, so I think I'm just going to call it quits. Thanks for watching, everybody.